In this video, I want to introduce some ideas on how to mesh up web services rather than using a platform for MOOCs. If you take this idea to the extreme, you have one central hub, an information desk, so to speak. That refers to video platforms, discussion platforms, shared documents, scheduled or unscheduled video conferences and so on. All of them possibly living on different servers in the cloud. These services out there in the cloud can be integrated to different degrees. One option is embedding, where you often try to present a unified front-end to the user. This is a web mashup in the strict meaning of that term. You try to combine several services available on the web into one seamless experience. If any single of these services breaks, your product breaks. A standard option is to use iframes, for instance, for YouTube videos. And possibly add a little JavaScript, for instance, to have a transcript on the page that runs in sync with the YouTube video. A much more lightweight approach is linking. In the extreme case, you would just be giving a list of URLs, which is of course pretty seamful and maybe distracting or even confusing for many participants. From the viewpoint of the learner, however, this type of arrangement may be great for a personal learning environment. The idea being that the learner has his or her own collections of search engines, collaboration tools, and so on. The most prominent example of a MOOC run without a central platform may be CCK08, Connectivism and Connected Knowledge, which is regarded as the first CMOOC in history. In this case, the hub was an RSS aggregator that collected the updates from blogs, from Twitter, from wikis, from Moodle and whatsoever, and presented them to the participants as an RSS feed. The participants then used an RSS reader, for instance, most email software will do, to get an up-to-date list of all those things that have happened out there on the internet. In case you're wondering, RSS stands for really simple syndication or rich site summary. An RSS feed is a way to publish updates. The mechanical MOOC of the peer-to-peer -peer university simply uses mass email rather than RSS feeds. The mechanical MOOC sends out mails with lists of resources to be looked at, with lists of problems, with points to discuss and so on. CCK08 and the mechanical MOOC are examples of linking. If you look at the use of YouTube videos in AdX and Udacity, this of course is an example of embedding. To run a MOOC without a central platform in this linked type of approach, we need some sort of hub. Nowadays, RSS is a little out of fashion, but still works. For instance, with aggregators such as Chimpfeeder. You could use a blog site as the center of your MOOC. And then there's lots of social networks that can be used to create some sort of heartbeat for that MOOC. Once the central hub is in place, the next big question is where to put the videos simply due to the bandwidth they consume. For narrated PowerPoint slides, you can get away with one megabyte per minute or less. But the more details and the more motion you show, the higher the data rate, possibly not only 10 megabytes per minute, but even 50 megabytes per minute. The higher the setting for compression that you're using, the lower the data rate, but the larger the amount of artifacts. The first thing that you may notice in the video is blockiness. You can spot a grid of squares in the picture. And depending on your settings for audio compression, the sound may be muffled or even distorted. Here is a back of the envelope calculation. If you have 1000 viewers, everybody watching 5 hours of video a single time, at an average rate of 5 megabytes per minute, then you end up with traffic of 1.5 terabytes. So that's like downloading the entire content of a modern hard drive. Hence, you may not want to put those videos onto regular web space. A standard choice is to upload videos onto YouTube. The free version of Vimeo is also interesting, but it limits the number of videos that you may upload during every week. iTunes may be too much part of the Apple universe to be helpful as one component in a mashup. You can post videos on Facebook and Google+. They may be hard to find on those platforms, but then again you can simply specify the links on your central hub. 
If you're worried about the rights that you have to grant YouTube or Vimeo or if you're worried about advertisements and if you want your users to be able to download those videos, for instance for mobile viewing, then Google Drive and Dropbox may be an option. There is one caveat though. Dropbox has a download limit of 20 gigabytes per day. Google Drive most probably has a similar one which is not specified that closely. And after the videos, there's all the rest. Quizzes, which can be hosted for instance on learningapps.org. A forum, which for instance can be done on Discuss or OpenStudy. Collaboration tools. In the earlier days, one used wikis. Now there's lots of options for Etherpad, Google Docs. For everybody in a STEM field, Sage Math Cloud is a very interesting option. It contains collaborative math software, a collaborative tech editor, and so on. And finally, there's video conferencing, Google Hangouts, Skype, plus at least two interesting mashups that are based on Google Hangout and support managing and scheduling those conferences for learning groups. So it's entirely possible to run a MOOC without paying for services and servers. Services that have great user interfaces and offer great functionality. However, it may be hard to keep track of discussions. This may already happen if you have a central discussion forum plus comments on YouTube. Some sites, in particular those for discussion forums, may require a separate login. And finally, it is pretty hard to say what a learner has or has not accomplished. Hence, it is tricky to issue a certificate.